Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Batman, my favorite character. Well, I still play at Batman. It's like this episode. <laughs> All right, kids, welcome back to another episode of We Are the Night. <gasps> the, the Batman, Batman podcast. podcast. Justin's here, so he knows it's the Asriel podcast. That's right. It's Al's real time. Oh yes. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, is our good friend. Justin Yow. That's right. Without a cam this time, because I'm using a backup microphone, and because of how teeny tiny the microphone is, I basically have to hold on to it the whole time. So rather than subjecting the cam viewers to just a glimpse of my ear and neck, I figured I would give them this lovely little owl avatar to check out that I found on Google Images. <laughs> Sorry, boys. No eye candy this time. That's right. No eye candy tonight. Sorry. Uh, Sometimes you can't have it all. That's right. And when you see his uh, small, his small mic, it has to be the big one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Only the large one will do. Oh my! All right. So yeah. So we're back. Uh, it was uh, two months ago. I think we uh, left off with the regular Asriel series. I think last time was those annuals and the yes. uh, plus the question. Yeah. Plus the question. Yep. So remember where we left Jean Paul uh, yeah, floating in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. After that volcano was off. Adrift in more ways than one. True. Oh, nice. True. Oh, see, that's a writer right there, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, should we jump in? Yes. Angel in hiding. It, yes. All right. So. Uh, so we'll do 21 through 23 tonight, kids. So, yes, Azrael number uh, issue 21 from September 1996. Renunciation writer, of course, Denny O'Neill, penciler Barry Kitson, inker James Pasco, colorist Demetrius Bazukas, and letterer Ken Brzezinic. And I don't have an editor listed. All right. Oh, Archie Goodwin, it says. Okay. Yeah, for some reason on this one, he's not listed. All right. Hmm. Uh, After returning from the tropical island and the adventures surrounding Dr. Orchid, Azrael reunites with his friends, Brian, Brian, and Lily. But he gets no time to rest because Nomaz informed Brother Rollo about Azrael's whereabouts, and Rollo immediately sends his acolytes to kill (laughs) Azrael. Oh, my. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Been for you. Oh, I mean, they they kind of skip over the biggest part where it's like you know in the beginning there where he's like floating in the where well, he gets to the yeah. beach and then he basically just like tells Azrael, "No, I'm done with you," and just kind yes. of like leaves the costume he, on the beach there. He relinquishes the garb and just leaves it and just yeah. And it's almost like at that moment he turns off the system as well. Yes. Yes. Like in doing so, the system just shut off. Yeah. My thoughts are exactly no longer yeah. there. Almost as though it was tied to the costume. And they were they were kind of alluding to that a little bit here and there in the issues leading up to this. Like he had to have the costume around in order to access his abilities as Azrael, his fighting prowess. Yeah, like but it was just Jean Paul, like he Yeah. He couldn't dial into that just on his own. It seems like Denny like kind of like flip flopped on that all the time because remember, is that what sent him to Dr. Orchid originally? Is like, oh man, he went nuts that you know when he wasn't wearing the costume. Remember when right. he was, basically yeah, he started losing control of it. Yeah. Basically when Club and Nugger got hit by a truck, uh an Azrael shaped truck. <laughs> yeah. Well, that also involved uh Lily as well. Uh-huh. So that 
Those were special circumstances, we could say. <laughs> yeah. What are the what yeah. are the triggers for that system? Well, the and <laughs> Yeah, just as Catwoman. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was even thinking, I forget what issue it is, but yes, uh, Lily is looking very, uh, she's going to the Ballin gym, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yes. She's yeah. rocking that purple bodysuit all over the place. Her proportions are becoming very Ballant esque yes. Yeah, yeah. That and that, and she went to the Peg Bundy hairdresser, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, there's an ad in the in the floppy of this for uh, a couple of CD albums, the the self titled Three Eleven album, and Subliminal Plastic Motives by Self. And if you purchase them at Sam Goody and Musicland, both of which I believe no longer exist, you can enter a trip to uh, enter to win a trip to meet Jenny McCarthy. Oh, and Get a free Jenny McCarthy fan club membership, a nine ninety five value just for entering. Oh my! That ad is gold right there, folks. Uh huh. Uh, oh yeah, I have the floppies. I didn't think I'm out. I'm reading this on the app. Oh man, I got to think out this floppy. Yeah, you will get a laugh out of that. Ad. I was reading this earlier, and I had a guffaw and several afterwards. Oh my! Yes, the yeah. Jenny McCarthy fan club. Yes, <laughs> a nine ninety five value just for entering the contest. It's fantastic! Trust me. Uh, for one of my birthdays, a friend of mine mine got me a Jenny McCarthy poster for my room. Yes, I did. Oh really? Oh, I joined the Jenny McCarthy <laughs> fan club many a night. Yes. <laughs> You were a subscriber. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think that poster no longer exists. No, is it? No, that was a very hands-on fan club. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, please, please, please. Listen to him. Listen to Justin laugh. And meanwhile, there's probably... That his room was probably covered wall to wall with pictures of biscuits more than oh like god yeah <laughs> yeah you better believe it <laughs> okay okay 1996 <laughs> who was who was the biscuit for a young justin who was it 1996 oh man i think that might have been chris o'donnell oh yeah uh, at that uh, age i was really into chris o'donnell yeah. oh so so we're between batman uh forever and batman and mm -hmm. robin oh, okay. i think so right uh -huh. 96 yeah, yeah. i think those movies were 95 and 97 yep. yeah Oof, yeah and i watched the other movies with him and the one with al pacino what was it sent of a woman right okay yeah 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 Yeah, he was in that and there was a couple other ones too yeah he was prime biscuit back then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my. So yeah. So yeah. But, uh, so basically, John Paul just dumps the costume on the beach and walks. Yeah. Away. And then there's a conversation with him and oh. and sister Lily and Brian, which I love that Nomos is just kind of like nonchalantly there, eavesdropping on the whole conversation. They don't even notice this giant hulking creature just above them. Well, they're basically <laughs> having like... Grinning and giggling. It looks like they're having coffee on a balcony. Yeah, he's just like laying on the roof yeah. on his back. <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's just like a couple of feet away and they have no knowledge that he's there. He's like sunbathing. Yeah, it's great. I was happy to see him again because he was a character from, as you know, from the the sort of Asriel miniseries at the very beginning of all this. Yep. So he's a link to the very beginning of this character. Oh yeah, yeah. Boy, that would have been funny if he would have been around uh, the Help Asbats. Oh man, could you imagine? Yeah, his own version of Alfred <laughs> is no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Especially those Catwoman uh, issues. No, there's only the holy mission. There's no time for some. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter if she's the knight herself. You must ignore her. <laughs> so go take a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> the, the order has mastered many a technique for that. It's called the five finger death punch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 
but then we see yes uh, so somehow he gets back to brother rollo and gives him the whole thing about uh he's like because Rolla wants to know, you know, basically why he's got a mad on for Lily because he's like, oh, Azrael is living with the American psychiatrist Brian and that vicious traitor slut. Yeah, slut. yeah he's he took that personal that she left oh, the yeah. order. He took that real personal. And he, yeah, Brother Rollo's swift descent into madness continues in this three part story. That we're covering yeah. tonight. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. This banana peel slide into madness continues. And Nomaz is like, "Hey, for weeks at a time, I could not locate him. He would appear in Gotham City and vanish almost immediately. But he appears to be settled now. He has enrolled in a university, and for the past month, has led a regulated life." Hmm. And then he wants, to, and then Brother Rolla wants to know about Lily. She walks, she reads, she occasionally speaks to men on the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess that's worthy of note. Yeah. And of course, Rollo. I do not doubt that she speaks to men. She is a woman, cunning, sly. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Lily will die slowly. Azrael <laughs> will die. Lily will die slowly. Yeah. But then, and yeah. then he has a, a clandestine meeting with St. Dumbass. Yeah, who, I mean, whether it's real or an hallucination, you know, same dumbass tells him, he's like, don't, don't, don't seek revenge. He's like, they're, they, they pose no threat to the order and they, they, you know, they may be, you know, uh, they're no longer a threat to us and no Maz may not, may yet be useful. Ignore them all. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it made me question a little bit in this sequence of events mm -hmm. whether or not that is real or imagined because Nomaz is eavesdropping on this entire conversation that Rollo's having with the helm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, when Rollo decides to indiscriminately summon his three acolytes and say, go after Azrael, Nomaz is in the background listening and he says, blasphemy. So it's almost as though he knew what Saint Dumas was saying to Brother Rollo. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. he's actually contradicting the orders of Saint Dumas. Like this is blasphemy, and called him out on it. Yeah. So yeah, either that head is is the real real deal, or I I wonder if Rollo even unconsciously is like a ventriloquist. Oh. <laughs> That's a good point too. Yeah, yeah. There could be a voice coming from it, all right, and it could be his very own. I mean, that'd be true psychopath. Be like, absolutely. No, let me kill the woman. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he summons the warriors three here. Yeah. Yeah, they did remind me. Their little, their uh, color schemes remind me of the warriors three a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he but, tells yeah. them to assassinate Nomos, which I was really surprised by, actually. I thought, wow. That's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. He says, do that before they leave. And he tells them to slay Azrael also. But then he says, make a captive of the woman Lily. Mm hmm So. Yeah. But yeah, Nomos, uh, yeah, escapes, gets away. Gets away. Yeah, I was surprised that Brother Rollo wanted to kill him off like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he blames Nomaz for, I guess, not directing Azrael. You know, letting him go off and be Batman for a while. And then, if had he been training him, he wouldn't have come back. And you know, I guess tainted Lily or whatever. Mm, he sees him as a failure. He, yeah, he failed. He failed his mission for the Sacred Order. Like he was the first one to to fail them when it came to Jean Paul. Yeah, Valley. yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he gets away because they're like, oh, he'll freeze outside. <laughs> He's like, you fools, centuries, the dwarflings have been bred to withstand ill weather and all other hardships. Mm, he says, yes, yeah. we're on the woman. Yeah, the snow isn't any impediment for him. Yes. So we see uh, uh, Jean-Paul is back at the university where we found him, what, at the beginning of Sword of Azrael number one? Yes. <laughs> We're going full circle here, folks. Yeah. Yes, I'm back in his old apartment. Back in his old apartment, which I'm amazed is still available. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, guess it's, I guess it's Gotham, whatever. 
I mean, unless, uh, yeah, unless there's something wrong with it or, you know, yeah, well, two and they that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 There's multiple possibilities as to why that yeah. apartment could still be available <laughs> several months or however long later. I mean, it don't look too glamorous. Is that is that just the mattress on the floor there? Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm like. Is this actual apartment or is this like a dorm room? It almost looks like a dorm, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it almost looks like like a one room apartment. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it is student housing or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, I'm like, I'm like, wasn't Bruce Wayne paying for that house they were staying at? I'm like, why didn't you just? Yeah, stay? right. That beautiful estate out in the woods or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> again, you know, his he he wanted to go back to school. He wanted to finish his classes. So I guess I that. Yes. Makes... But I'm just wondering how much the commute would be from that house they were living. Ah, oh, my kids might be a little bit of a commute, but yeah. I mean, I mean, Daddy Warbox is gonna put you up, man. You know all his secrets. Yeah, I mean, he could get a driver to take you to classes and back, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say by <laughs> car, but but again, it'll be a thing, whole thing. Oh, I don't know what to do. He doesn't have yeah. to the damn Batmobile. <laughs> well, still, yeah. at this point, do we really want Jean Paul behind the wheel of a vehicle? Uh, that's true. Probably not. I drove that damn subway rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we saw how well that went. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that just yeah. follows the track. Yeah, you just hit it. You just hit the uh, right. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Lily and Brian are helping to move in. And Brian's like, oh, there's no food. So, he says he's going to run down to the deli. He says, he's like, oh, uh, yeah. He says, I'll get a housewarming gift from the deli and then I will consume it for you. <laughs> yeah. Gee, thanks. Mm-hmm. And then he has a cute little moment with sister, with sister Lily, Ezreal does, Jean Paul does, where he asks her out on a date, and she says, uh, "A small piece of fruit." <laughs> uh, no, it's social engagement. Have dinner in a restaurant. Attend a film show. Yes. See us together. And she's like, "Oh, that." So she agrees, which is nice. And then you know. Because he says tomorrow night, she's like tomorrow night's satisfactory, and then she goes, "I guess she's like, I have to start someplace." Oh my, yeah, it's like damn, that's yeesh. Yeah, so oh, I but so so I think we're starting to see L- Lily starting to uh, understand the power she has over men. Yes. Or so but it, it obviously doesn't bother Jean Paul because after he after she leaves, he's like, "Yes," and he's leaping up in the air like a excited fourteen year old. <laughs> well, okay. well, yeah. I mean, basically, he's like, I don't know, a child or a teenager in a body, of yeah. and it's like, oh, yeah. And again, she she thinks she has power over men. She's going to be sorely mistaken here after in a after a while. Mm, as we'll see before too long. Yeah. yeah. So Brian comes back with the food, and we see the the Warriors three pull up out front. Yes, there's a hostage situation. Yeah, because yeah, Brian or Brian, Brian and Lily are leaving, but then the other Warriors three grab them. And they go <laughs> after Sean <laughs> Paul, who who cannot. Access his abilities as Asriel. Yes, I love Lily. Call the police. <laughs> <laughs> you are not Asriel. I am not Asriel. <laughs> yeah, you are not Asriel. But his phone. Remember, not- you don't have the costume anymore. You left it on the beach. Yeah, and his phone's not connected, so he can't call the police. No. He, I know he runs to the roof. He tries to like kick the door open. And he's like, I am not Asriel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, like, oh, I can't hey, do this anymore. Oh, hey, maybe if I just unlock it, I can open the door. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he gets to the roof, and uh, they told me it was no place to run. Our orders are clear. Bring the one known as Brian and the woman, the brother Rollo, and slay the betrayer. Yes, the betrayer. <laughs> yeah. And again, I mean, we'll get into this even more, I think, in these next two issues, but does. Does Jean Paul seem like a little extra slow this time? Yeah, I mean, and again, like I said, I always have this theory where Denny has to have at least someone play the dimwit in one of his issues, and I think yeah. it's Jean Paul at least for this arc. Yeah, and 
Was there any detail as to how much time had passed in between the beginning of this issue where he washes up on the beach and leaves his costume behind? And then when he's doing all this other stuff, going back to school and moving back into his old apartment. Well, didn't Nomad say he's been, he's key enrolled in the universe and he's kind of been living like a normal life for a month or something? For a month, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I guess after surviving that experience on the island with Dr. Orchid and going through all that crazy mess, like, I guess after a month you would still have some residual <laughs> residual PTSD from that whole situation. That's yeah. a good point. And two, I, I kind of headcanon it where I'm just like, maybe shutting off the system, shutting off Asriel, kind of like, maybe i mean we don't know how, how that the system was conditioned into him maybe they tied it into like his cunning and like even like some mm. of the intellect so it's like right. shutting off asriel like kills some of your iq points true true because when he had access to the system he could design all that stuff oh, all yeah, the yeah. armor for the costume he could do all this other stuff yeah, yeah he yeah. was memorizing the subway schedule for that right rock so he doesn't hit a train yeah 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 memorizing all those computer files in the bad cave yeah. so denny never explains that but yeah i'm thinking yeah you shut off the system you kind of like yeah shut off half your that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah that makes sense all right so anything else on that one or should we get to the no next? i think yeah we can move on to angel in hiding part two yes all right so all right, so we jump to Azrael number 22. Yeah, like you said, Angel in Hiding, part two, October 1996. Uh, this looks like, yeah, same team here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. First, Nomaz gave away Azrael's location to Brother Rollo, but now Nomaz saves Azrael from the attack of Rollo's acolytes. After rescuing Brian, Brian, and Lily as well, Azrael. <laughs> Uh, here it comes, kids. Yes, Asriel meets Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> yes, he wants to stop Brother Rollo once and for all and needs Batman's help to take down the Order of Saint Dumbass. <laughs> all right, mm. I mean, this is a pretty decent cover, kind of like him, like hesitantly, yeah. like he's putting the costume on, like reaching for that sword. Yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. Damn, I keep forgetting. I, I do have the, I do have those covers to share, and I'm keep forgetting the share. Oh, whoops! Yeah, yeah, I was. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the first one, kids. Out, yeah. Yes. Him leaving that costume on the beach. Yeah. Looks like something out of a horrible romance novel. Uh, <laughs> Harlequin, a Harlequin novel on the beach by himself. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, this one. Yeah, with him in that costume, we're kind of reaching hesitantly for that sword yes. and in the background there. Yep. Great cover. <laughs> Great no cover. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, those that's it. That, I think these covers are Kitson's also. So Yeah, I think he did all three of these this, yeah. this time. Yeah. They're fantastic. So yeah, there's there's no uh, false advertising on these kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this issue was good, but I felt like there was a fair amount of padding in here a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I felt like some scenes were kind of drawn out and, mm -hmm. and kind of extended just for the sake of it. But other, yeah. other than that, it was really good. And I I liked the fight in the beginning with it turning out to be Nomaz that comes in and saves John Paul from the, the Warriors 3 of St. Dumbass. Yeah, I liked that twist. That was cool. And the part where... <laughs> I also really laughed. I forgot about this part where they're in the car trying to catch up with the boat that has Brian and sister Lily on it and yeah. it's pulling away from the docks. And then they just jump the jump the docks and land the car right onto the back of the boat. <laughs> and there's this great full page panel of the car just landing. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah just landing directly squarely onto the boat. <laughs> It's great, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, well, no mods. At first, he says he's he's not going to help uh, John Paul's friends, but then he says, you know, 
the orders to survive Rollo needs to die and first John Paul's like I'm not Azrael he's like but I'll help you if you help me help me save my friends yeah so yeah they crash the boat and then yeah, the one guy with, the guy with the gun smacks it and like kind of pistol whips Jean Paul and goes you hit hard you hit hard <laughs> what do you think he's gonna do exactly yeah as he's about to shoot Jean Paul, yeah, no mass, no mods hits him from behind. Yeah, and Sister <laughs> Lily gets in on the action too. I love this. She yeah. gets a, some pole or something and bashes this guy in the face, and then uh, drives her elbow into his face. I thought, wow, she looks like she's just working a. <laughs> <laughs> and at Divas. Yes, she was using that stripper pole for great vengeance, and I love it. There, there you go. There's a, there's a superhero idea: a stripper who uses a pole, a pole, uh, like crime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it has to be set in the nineties. Yes. Oh, oh my God! If it was if it was a movie in the nineties, would have been played by Pam Anderson. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. T- yeah. T- today, Sydney Sweeney. Oh yes, <laughs> without a doubt. Uh, and I love yeah. So the uh, the boat's sinking, so they all jump overboard. Of course, Lily has to take that uh, purple sweater off and get into her white oh, sh- her white yes. shirt. <laughs> yes, you know, yeah. And then and Brian. Brian, Brian can't swim. Poor it's guy. Yeah. Father, but I can't yeah. swim. So yeah. you know, has to grab yeah. him. Uh, and then uh, on the ship, one of the uh, Saint Dumas guys is like, "The boat is beyond repair. We should save ourselves." And the other one's like, "Should we? We have failed, brother Rollo. Uh, we have failed, brother Rollo. Will be harsh." And they just stand there and let themselves drown. <laughs> yeah, was... they just look at each other and let them. Let the... <laughs> I'm like, really? What is brother Rollo going to do to you? I'm like, that's worse than drowning. At, well, I'm like, why even go back if you're not worried about him? Like. Leave Gotham and go somewhere else in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially with that boat sunk, he's going to assume you're dead because basically yes. he knows nothing ex- unless except for what people tell him. So if yeah, none exactly. of you come they, back, they have, perfect, they have a perfect escape. They have a perfect out from this order. <laughs> I mean, I get it. We want to show what a lunatic Rollo is, but I'm like, yeah, I yeah. Like, I almost think it would be kind of easy to to get away from him at, at least at this point because. Again, he's like he seems like he's a senile old man, and you know he's all focused on John Paul yes. and Billy now. Yeah, his concern is going to be with those two, and not these two guys. That, for all intents and purposes, like you said, he could believe that they're completely believe that they're dead. Uh-huh. I don't get it. It's bonkers. That whole panel, I was like, "What, really?" And. I mean, we never see them again, right? And later on in the series, these two guys never show back up again. Oh, no, 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 on the boat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they just stood there and drowned. Yeesh. Yeah, that's harsh. Because they're that's, that's they were, weird. They were less afraid of drowning than going to see Rollo. Yeah, that's weird. And then back in Jean Paul's apartment, they're all drying off. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're right there. Sister Lily's looking pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jim Ballant yeah. Catwoman right yes. there. Yes. There's some j- definite Jim Ballant vibes happening there, without a doubt. Oh, my God. And it's like her hair is big enough as it is. Then you step back that <laughs> towel on top of her head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like trying her head to the tent or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> is this Medusa from Marvel? Who is this? Looks like, looks like she has a McFarland <laughs> cape. She's like, Dad, yeah, right, off. yeah. Ugh. And then Nomo's getting all in Brian's face. Not foul. The order is noble. Rollo is the foul one. Destroy Rollo, and the order will again be splendid. Yeah, yeah you say so. Yeah, because even Lily's like, yeah, the order's trying to kill us, and Nomo's is like, no, it's Rollo, not the order. Yeah. Well, still, I mean, it's got to be admitted that the orders. Mm. corrupt to the core at this point and yeah. lily, lily says yeah she agrees with no Maz, at least on the whole role of thing because she says jean paul if you remember i asked you to deal with him when we first met mm-hmm. he's like deal you wanted me to skewer him yeah mm. and lily's basically like yeah you know the order has vast resources and rollo holds grudges and stuff he she goes he dies or we do it's as simple as that yeah 
he's not going to give up. He's not going to just let them go. Yeah, and that's when Brian's like, yeah, four people against, you know, an utterly ruthless organization of vast wealth and dozens of willing servants. I wouldn't care to bet on our chances. And John Paul says, maybe more than four. There may be a fifth. Yeah. <laughs> the, the next yeah. page, we see Batman. John Paul says, <laughs> I wish I'd never met you. Yeah. <laughs> the best line in the whole issue, in my opinion. <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, I love it. Mm. I thought, Denny, that's fantastic. You're asking me to go with you to help bring down the St. Dumas. I love he calls that the St. Dumas mob. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's not, that, he's not that far off. Yep. Yes, yeah. please. And then Batman comes down. No. No, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to give you a bunch of money. I'm going to give you a million bucks. I'm going to give you... <laughs> I'm going to give you a brand new Ezreal costume that Harold's been working on. Yeah. Which is, it's so weird. I, he, yeah, Batman's like, oh, I'm basically too busy. I'm like, you know what? Let Robin or Nightwing punch Riddler in the face this yeah. week. It's like, why don't you go help Jean Paul? And exactly. then, he, you know, and then he's like, oh, or I've seen, I've seen you as Azrael and it wasn't pretty. You weren't human. And Jean Paul says, you're afraid I'll kill. And Batman goes, won't you? So, okay. So Batman's, Batman's all right with you killing as long as you don't do it around him. Yeah. Right. I don't yeah. Know. A lot of sight out of mind, you know, I guess. And, I mean, yeah, he had no shortage of people to to take over vigilanteing in Gotham City for a few days. Exactly. Yeah, at this point in time, there were so many people that were helping oh. him. Oh, sorry, Bruce, maybe you'd be more interested in taking down St. Dumbass if you had a hot daughter, huh? <laughs> That's just it. You know where Bruce's priorities are. Uh, yeah. Oh, we know where his priorities are. Yeah, yeah. St. Thomas doesn't have a hot daughter or like uh, wear skin tight leather and a whip. <laughs> yeah. No superior puss to be found. Yeah. Uh, see, kids. Superior puss. <laughs> Uh, but he goes, I won't go with you. Instead, I'll do something I've never done before. Compromise. Yeah. But like you said, he'll say, I'll give you money. I'll put a million dollars at your disposal. Gear, I'll supply you with vehicles, planes, state-of-the-art technology. And most important of all, the right clothing. Yeah, because he said Harold yeah. made a new Azrael costume. And I was happy to see Harold make a guest appearance yes. here. I'm always pleased to see Harold. Mm -hmm. I still maintain that Harold was done dirty. Yes, yeah, and hush, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was the part that I disliked the most about that story. I yeah, said, what? Like, You're going to do Harold dirty like that? That's horrible. Oh, yeah, God, it, I yeah, hate it. it. Yeah, because he kind of disappeared around no man's land, and then, yeah, then they bring him back in hush just to do him dirty in the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hated that. I that know, was, me too. That was garbage. Yeah. And then, and then that, he, yeah, he went off with like that version of Ace the Bat Hound. We never see that dog again. Yeah, we never got a resolution with Ace, did we? No. Ew. Maybe some writer will go back and revisit that. Yeah. Yeah. I will, yeah. Come on. Tell me the untold story of how he's living on a yeah. farm upstate. Come on. Absolutely. I want to yeah. see that. I love Ace. Or he's living in a retirement home with like a bunch of like police dogs or something. Yeah. Yeah, but I could see a story where, like, there was an escaped convict from Blackgate or Arkham or something that, like, found its way up to the farmland or something, and Ace had to, like, bust his way off his leash or something. To, oh, like, nice. Wrestle the escaped convict to the ground and oh. before he could uh, compromise the farmhouse. I could see that. Let's yeah. see it. Let's see that story for, for Ace. Yeah, yeah come on. The untold story of Ace. Come on. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, Batman tells Jean Paul to put on the suit. He's like, I remember clothes make the man. Jean Paul, you must be everything Azrael is, everything he can be, or you'll fail. Or you'll fail. He says, You don't mince words. Uh, so, yeah, he tries it on. But then they're like, Yeah, hit, the, hit, hit, that, hit, that, hit that punching bag. <laughs> He's basically, yeah. nothing's happening. Yeah. There's Once again, no system. Once again, I am not Azrael. Yeah, there's no system available. Nope. All right, so 
You know what? Out of this, well, I mean, some of these, all, all these kind of feel like seem like filler, but that middle part is filler. Yeah, that's what I mean. This 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 issue is kind of padded. Yeah, There's a lot of padding that happens here. I feel like this story could have even been two parts. This yeah. angel in hiding. I feel like it could have been two parts, possibly. I wonder if if they did it like this because because I don't know for timing or something or maybe I don't know. Wasn't there a big crossover coming up just shortly after these issues? Well, we kind of very, very lightly, tangentially brush up against, uh, what is that, Final Night? <laughs> oh, yes, there's a reference to Final Night yes. because of the quote-unquote bad weather. Yes, 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 because long story short, kids, yes, a sun eater uh, basically <laughs> blocked out the sun and the world started to freeze. The whole world started to freeze until... Uh, yeah. Yes, that Madman Parallax, aka Hal Jordan, uh, reignited the sun, basically mm. redeeming himself. Yes, and getting getting him that shot to become the Specter. I of course love Hal Jordan. Yeah, I don't think is Will a fan of that story, or does he hate it? Um, he's kind of lighting up. I know he didn't like the Parallax stuff originally because yeah. Know, if that's like one of your favorite characters, and they you know they turn them all evil and stuff. Oh and yeah, not yeah. Be, yeah, especially in that way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, like he said, he wasn't like too like he didn't want to give that uh, the Spectre series by J.M.D. Mateus a shot at first, but we read it. He loved it. Yeah, that's a great series. They that's some fantastic that. artwork. They don't collect that. It's not in trade. It's not on the app. That's another oh, that's thing. not on the app either. No, no. Oh, God, that I've been a malware mount for that. Yeah, no. Yeah, oh, my I, God. I was all mad with myself. I'm like, I should have bought this back in the day. It's great. Yeah, it's good like stuff. The first half, yeah, that would make a great collection now. Like one of those yeah. DC, um, what do they call them, World's Finest. That new line that they're doing, the, basically the DC Epic Collections, or DC's do, version of the Epic Collection line. Or like we said, you could do like an Omnibus or something. Because I think that series was like twenty seven. Was it twenty? I think it was oh, yeah. Missions. And then you can throw in like Day of Judgment, where he like uh, right and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they could do an there. omnibus of that. They do a nice collection, yeah. Yeah. Because, again, they finally did... Because, again, kids, I did talk to J.M.D. Mateus again, uh, Capes Lunatics, episode 335. They yes. are, they are they, they're starting, finally, to collect his uh, spectacular Spider-Man run with Sal Buscema. I saw that. I'm really happy about that. And then the one he re Justin's really happy about in 2025, you're getting his Dr. Fate stuff reprinted. Yes. Yeah. Yes, with Sean McManus. I love it. So, yeah, now we need that Spectre series. Yeah. My my first uh, JMD Matias story was a Namor story. Oh! It was, my, it was my very first Namor story. It really? was that four-issue miniseries that he did, I think, in 84. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. I have that man to thank for my first Namor story. My favorite biscuit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I even read that. If I did, it's been a, like a hundred years. Oh God, it's good. It's fantastic. I'm fantastic. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, not just for that. It's a great story too. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, a lot of it, that. there's a lot of Atlantis stuff that happens. Yeah, Jan Dimitri is a great writer. Oh, uh, who does the art on that? I think it's I'm Danny sure. Bolanity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's that excellent. It's excellent stuff. All right. So should we get to the last issue of this? Yes. And again, kids, we're kind of going to leave you on a cliffhanger here for a month. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. All right. Asriel number 23, Angel in Hiding, part three, November 1996. Same team. Before taking down the Order of St. Dumbass, Asriel, Nomaz, Brian Brian, and Sister Lily traveled to the laboratory of Grey Abbott. Tune out now, Russell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going back to this place. Yeah. If you don't want to relapse, uh, Russell, yeah. no. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Nomaz? Nom, 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 but yes, they traveled to the laboratory of the Great Abbot. There they plan to reintegrate the system back into the psyche of Azrael. As they arrive, they are attacked by some men, but saved by their pilot, who actually is Batman. <laughs> yeah. During the process of reintegrating the system, more attackers enter the laboratory. 
They were sent by Brother Rollo and dressed to look like the Demon Fists. They defeat Nomaz, Lily, and Brian, but then Asriel reawakens. Yeah. Right at the end. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's so weird because, yeah, the, this this three issue, it's its own arc, and then the next one st- starts a new arc, but it, it kind of just picks up off that cliffhanger. So Right. It's like, yeah. he's going hiding. Oh, he ain't hiding no more. Yeah. He's back, and this time it's personal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this one opens with like, yeah, Batman's still back in the Batcave saying, I've just sent Azrael out to die. Yeah. Mm. Which is not far from the truth. Yes. Yeah, he's telling Alfred, I, you know, you know, I can give him all the money and whatever, but he's facing the most powerful, ruthless organization on Earth, the Order of Saint. Yeah. The most not powerful... Cobra. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not yes, not in this universe. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say yeah. when he says the most powerful, ruthless organization on earth, Ra's al Ghul's like, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. What am I, chop liver over here? Yeah. yeah. Again, I think doesn't Ra's al Ghul at some point, or no, was it in that arc we covered? Uh, that still gives Russell nightmares. Well, didn't uh, Ra's say he met like the he actually met Saint Dumbass? Yeah, he knew Back about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he knew about that order, and something it was something about that he'd been watching them from a distance with great interest or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, Batman's like, yeah, he doesn't have his Azrael abilities, so he doesn't have a chance without them. And then we see the others, uh, John Paul, and the others leaving. <laughs> Brian, we could go into hiding and. John Paul, do you really think we could hide from Brother Rollo and his army of obedient slaves, his hundreds of billions of dollars, his ability to bribe, control, corrupt? I'm thinking, yeah, he's a senile old man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if the best assassins that he can send after Azriel, Lily, and Brian are two dudes that would rather drown on a boat in the middle of the water rather than go back empty-handed or even try to fake their own demise mm. that's the best type of assassins that they have to throw at these people the warriors and they're in trouble yeah they're in trouble uh so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and now batman saying oh maybe i should have kept them here by force <laughs> oh, by force huh okay right yeah we're gonna do that All right. and look <laughs> Uh yeah. Yeah, again, when has Batman ever been forceful with Azrael? Yeah, no, no, no. Don't go after Bane. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's so funny. Alfred, this self-doubt is very much unlike you, uh, if I may say so. Batman looking at that Azrael on the screen. I know. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, then, 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 then I don't know. Is this woman supposed to be a prostitute, or is she just a woman on the street I, beaten by her boyfriend? I don't know. No, I I took it to mean that she was a prostitute. Uh, yeah, and the pimp the pimp was being all nasty with her. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't want to uh, just assume from the fishnets and stuff, but yeah. Oh well, it's Gotham, you know. Oh my God, she's wearing a string of pearls. Oh yeah, you're just asking for trouble. If you're a woman wearing <laughs> pearls on a Gotham street, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Any street in Gotham, yeah, that is not a good idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy just yeah, just beating on her. So John Paul runs. Yeah, mm, says, wait a minute, right, out, right out in public, like right out in public, yeah. So like he like John Paul tries to help, he gets he gets punched too. He gets beaten up too, yeah. But then I guess there's what there's a bunch of people on the street, and he's like, ah, the hell with you. Yeah. And then Brian's like, this is a, uh, this is something I haven't seen before. Uh, compassion it becomes you, John Paul. Mm. And he's like, it ain't gonna be much use against the order. So then they go back to his apartment and Lily tries to test him by, I don't know, basically dressing like the Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah, and hitting him in the head with a stick. I thought, oh my goodness. Wow. 
like, it's funny if she were like accidentally <laughs> killing them, they'd be, they'd be like, oh, <laughs> oh, we're, oh, we're really, oh, we're really screwed now. <laughs> At least before we had it, we had the uh, slim hope that maybe we could turn Azrael back on. Yeah. I know. yeah. <laughs> oh, she's like, I found this mask in the trash. <laughs> this this red skull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was conveniently laying around, right? Yeah. yeah. She thought it might activate Azrael. That didn't work. No. But then Nomaz is like, why do you not listen full? I told you, you can never not be Azrael. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it how he said that. Why do you not listen, fool? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he does not mess around. Yes. And John Paul's like, yeah, well, well the evidence to the contrary. And evidence. Fah, there is no evidence. There's only the system mm -hmm. which made you what you are. <laughs> Yeah, that's how they come up with the whole idea for the laboratory. Because Jean Paul's like, "Could we reactivate?" And, and Nomaz is like, "The system is secret. Part of it I know, much I do not. I lack the text." And that's when Brian's like, "Oh, hey, it's by coincidence. Uh, yeah, we brought we brought a bunch of those back from that laboratory. Mm, mm -hmm. They were in Latin and German." Mm. But yeah, Jean Paul's like, "Yeah, they, no, they, my body hasn't changed. It's just you know my mind." recreate Azrael in my psyche and then I'll be him again. And she, Brian's like, is that what you want? He's like, dumb. He's like, it, 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 it's what it has to be done. Yeah. So There's yeah. There's no other way around it. Mm. Uh, so yes, but yeah, and Underling is giving Rollo their report saying, yeah, it's not good news. Two of our acolytes have vanished. The other two drowned in a harbor near Gotham City. Yeah, so those yeah, those dudes are dead. So maybe Crazy. The two, that's nuts. Maybe, maybe the other two ran. They're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not stupid like those other guys in the boat. I mean, they're not like Azrael and Lily. I mean, if you ask Rolla what their names are, he's probably like, uh yeah. Joe and Mike, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He even says he goes, what, what do you think I care what befell acolytes? So yeah, if they yeah. if the two that are missing stay in hiding, yeah. Yeah. What if the treacherous Azrael and the slut Lily? Yeah. Mm. Oh, was it one of these issues? I think at one point doesn't Rollo say, Oh, if Lily, you know, usually if she was here, Lily would advise me and one of the one of the underlings is like, but she's a traitor. He's like, I know that. Don't you think I don't know that? Yes, yeah. I think it's maybe later on in this issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh Lord! And then yeah, they're flying out in the private jet, and we all we have to recap the whole uh, monkey fluids. Uh, oh yes, we have a panel of him doing the whole freak out panel, the whole freak out scene. Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah, Russell, if you're listening, don't don't read this part. So I I love yeah the first time he was there yeah it made him like flip out and you know basically you know he basically went feral but it's like yeah well, let's go back yeah let, let's take your let's take his damaged psyche and hopefully it'll like reintegrate Azrael yeah okay yeah like this isn't going to be traumatic for him in any form or fashion right yeah and wasn't this like in the neighborhood of Raz Al Ghul I'm like well, why don't you ask Raz Al Ghul for help taking down oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he would probably welcome the assistance in getting rid of a potential rival organization. Yeah, you could you destroy what you, you destroy what you need, and he probably could absorb the rest of the organization. Yeah, they have billions of dollars that he could yeah. conveniently envelop into the folds of his organization. What's yeah, it it's for, crazy. What's in it for me? Destroy a rival, and uh, I don't know. One billion dollars. One billion dollars. How about new? <laughs> uh, oh, that's so funny. Hello, Brian. Dear Lord, I'm attempting to undo a successful cure. Yeah. The medical society on Earth will condone this. But yeah, this yeah, this pilot with the like the gray hair and the great big gray beard almost looks like Santa. Yeah. 
yeah, it flies them down. Yeah, they could land at this airport. And again, I guess, uh, are these, I don't know, I guess these aren't are they, St. Dumbass. Uh, no, I think these are just thugs. Yeah, these are just, I guess, dudes that thought they had, might have I, had some cash straight off the plane, maybe. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a private jet, I guess. So, yeah. but I don't know. I don't know. It always seems to me Denny has like such a, I don't know, like, uh, depressing view of the world it seems like there's thugs always lurking around <laughs> the corner that's right <laughs> you step off an airplane and you're immediately held up at gunpoint <laughs> well, in like the middle of the desert yeah there's yeah. Just, there's just these thugs hanging out yeah 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 Yeah. in every corner of the world there's a despicable den of thieves waiting somewhere <laughs> yeah we haven't seen another human being in six months oh here they come let's rob them. here they come yeah let's eat them alive <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, they basically get this high tech camper. But yeah, these thugs try to hold them up, and that's when the pilot kicks their butts. Yeah, the pilot with the I love John Paul's like, Could it be him. Yeah, and then when Brian's like extra extraordinary poetry in motion, where did you learn that? And the pilot says, "I watch a lot of Chuck Norris movies." Yeah, John Paul's like, "Nah, it ain't him." Invasion USA in particular. <laughs> so. uh yeah, so the pilot's like, yeah, I'll help, uh, help deliver these two to whatever passes for law in these parts and then get back to the airport. And then we see, yes, flying back in the plane. It's it's Bruce Wayne. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so you've come this far. You flew them to, you, isn't this like Africa? Is this, was this in Africa? I think so. Or somewhere in that region. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just like, you came this far, but you're not going to go the rest of the way with them? Yeah, he's got his mask hanging up on a hook in the background. It's so oh, oh, I did it. I did enough. I I flew him here. I delivered him their camper, and I beat up two. Yeah, they'll be all right. I beat up two level one thugs, but let them do. The yeah, big, let them do the big boss fight. No. Yeah, this is their fight, not mine. I'm needed back in Gotham. Because right? here's an, here's an idea, Bruce. You take down Saint Dumbass, and then as we're or John Paul doesn't have to become Azrael again. You know, you're all white. And that one, and the last issue was he like, yeah, oh yeah, I don't like it. You know, sometimes you kill and stuff. Well, maybe if you keep him from becoming you, Azrael, he won't. You know, you're stopping future murders. Exactly, or maybe help him so that he doesn't have to kill people. Exactly. Like, join the join him in his fight to to defeat the Order of Saint Dumas, and then you can keep a tabs on him. And if he starts you know, getting crazy and killing people. Yeah, or if you help him before can... he has to become Azrael, then, you know, he's not... Yeah, you can prevent it before it happens. Some preventative measures would be extremely helpful here. Give John Paul a happy ending, and he literally can't kill anyone at this point. Right. Mm. Yeah, it seems weird that he would do that and then just leave like that. Yeah. It's so strange, yeah. But then, you know, what show this police chief or sheriff whatever they deliver those those thugs to base i guess he's in dumas's payroll because he calls and says yeah they just left mm -hmm. but of course they're driving across the desert which is covered in snow kids because again this is our tangent yes final night yep yep because yes the kid the world is freezing so okay so yeah so at this point yes batman does have stuff to do with gotham because yes there's that's blackout, true that's the true the sun isn't coming out. There's perpetual night. Yeah, because I remember there's one arc where yeah, like Man Bat shows up because he's going nuts because there's oh there's, yeah. there's no day and night cycle. It's all night, so yeah, Man Bat's running crazy. Yeah, I think wasn't there are a couple other characters too that went off the rails a little bit then. Oh yeah, what was interesting too because like in the uh, four Superman books, like you know, as the sun's not coming up, so Superman's slowly draining his powers. So yes, like, he's by, running out of powers. By yeah. the end, he's powerless. Yeah, and then he gets right. married right after this, and it's like, yeah, he's he's when he gets married, he's powerless. Yeah, and that Lois, was cool. Lois says, "Thank God." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Time that just right. <laughs> really enjoy that honeymoon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> why can't that happen more often she thinks you know it's just like some kind of like i don't know like not a full dose of kryptonite but just like you know like a just a <laughs> tiny little sliver of kryptonite just to, you know 
<laughs> yeah. A reverse blue chew, if you will. Oh, a kryptonite condom, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, so. this is the part where um where Brother Rollo freaks out at the at the dude oh, that's yeah. giving him the news. He's like, Of course she is. Do not dare to tell me what I already know. And her betrayal will be redeemed in agony. Oh Lord. Yeah, oh, but he's uh, nuts. John Paul does get a kiss on the cheek from Lily. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, in the vehicle. Yeah. And he's pleased about that. They find there's... their way into the base. Yeah, which is weird because they're sitting there in the snow and they're like, oh, been here 40 hours and we've seen no sign of activity, nor any sunlight. 40 me. hours. I'm like, Ugh. really? What? You're sitting there for four in this camper for 40 hours? I'm like, I think yeah. you can assume that cave's empty for the most yeah. part. Yeah. After 12, I'd be ready to book it in there. Yeah. Exactly. And then they go in and the place is trashed. And I'm happy that there weren't like a bunch of dead animal bodies in here. Because yeah. the last time we were here, there were a bunch of animals that were kept um, caged up and stuff. And I'm glad that they just weren't like shown indiscriminately murdered. Mm -hmm. But again, John Paul's kind of still flashing back to when he was here last time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. You want to talk about trauma? I mean, I. I think as far as any event in this series goes that we've seen so far, yes, I think that whole incident stands out as being the most traumatic for John Paul. Yes. Yeah, finding out he was spawned by monkey fluids and that he was zapped as an infant in this vat of fluid. Like, yeah, it's, woof, yeah. Followed, followed by, by a close second of a uh, naked Carlton Leha in a meat locker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, second so, yeah. most traumatic. Yeah, so yeah, Rollo tells him, may I send the troops in, have them dress like the demon this. Mm, <laughs> but then he seems like he's like, again, is he seen now or what? He's like, I, th I guess I had a reason for asking them to do that. Oh, to frighten them. Yes, that must have been it, to frighten them. Yeah. But yeah, it seems like uh yeah, Brian and Lily are going through the books, but uh No Moz is kind of like trying to looks like he's trying to hypnotize Jean Paul again, you know, with the little Yeah, yeah, trying to reactivate the system yeah. with the medallion. Yeah. Mm. But then they're ambushed with tranquilizer darts. You would hope, yeah. Well, yeah, that's cause... what it looks like. Yeah, because the other three get shot, and then you hear, know that you are violators. And they're like, it is Azrael. They shoot those yeah. parts in Azrael. He catches them. Yes. Know that you will feel my wrath. Yeah. <laughs> Great gotcha. ending. Giving him the finger. Yeah. Yeah. He means business. Uh, so. Was it just the cave, or it's like could they have saved this trip and just had no ma no maws like hold the little uh, medallion in front of his face? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did they need to be in this place for that to happen? I guess. Did we have to travel to the other side of the world for this, or? All right. So thoughts again. Uh, this one's kind of slow because he's basically not Azrael for most of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little weird. I mean, I I like the whole issue. The whole. Um, the whole idea of him having no abilities for a little bit and just mm -hmm. being Jean Paul Valley and relying on other people like Batman and No Maws and Lily and Brian for a change. Yeah. But like I said, the second part of this story I feel like is very full of filler and I feel like this could have been edited and condensed down. There were some parts that I felt were completely superfluous and could have been cut out. And I still, I, the part with the two assassins drowning on that boat, I just, I still can't wrap my head around that. It's, I know. It's Again, just, I think it's, it's meant to show how scary Rollo is, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think you could get away from him. Yeah. But if you're trying to portray your villain as being so scary and so threatening, it kind of undermines it when you have them being kind of blatantly senile like this. Yeah. 
it's and being so old and frail and all this stuff i mean i get he's kind of evil and all this other stuff but then you start to wonder well is it just because he's old and senile that he's doing half of this stuff it's it's weird yeah it's it's muddled at best yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I I love the artwork. I mean, I will always, in every episode of this series, sing the praises of the artwork of Barry Kitson. I think it's fantastic. Um, oh yeah, always. Yeah, and in the floppies too that I'm reading, again I'll comment on the great colors from Demetrius Basukas. His colors are so good on this glossy paper that Ezreal was printed on back in the day. Yes, it, it just stands out so vibrantly and so beautifully i love it but yeah i mean again i think the whole thing with rollo is it's just supposed to be yeah he is senile but again he's a senile old man in charge of a billion dollar evil right so, yes yeah yeah i i mean he's basically just like hmm. hold on wrong chord no oh, 50 million chords here all right so yes this the see now old man's basically like there has never been so many lies so much deception there has never <laughs> been anything like it <laughs> he's so old <laughs> how do you like it to that now how are you so old? <laughs> i wonder what color rollo's hair is under that i'm willing to bet it's a bright orange Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you an agitator? Crazy. Go home to mommy. <laughs> I can't. Like My mom's a monkey. Oh, ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. I never knew my mom. She was a monkey. Grab him by the chimpanzee. <laughs> Grab him by the monkey glands. <laughs> oh, damn it. Now we're going to have to look for monkey sounds for this show. Damn. Uh, the last five minutes brought, brought, brought to you by a sponsorship for Noel Tate. <laughs> oh. oh man yeah this was a good story though i liked it i mm -hmm. <laughs> i liked it for the most part i mean I, yeah. thought, I thought it could have used a little editing here and there but again i think it's yeah. like it's basically like a three issue setup for like the next three issues <laughs> right yeah they they were on these two or three issue arcs for a while yeah which I'm not complaining about. I think that they were, most of them were done really well. So, and I wonder if they like kind of asked, suggested that Denny tie in the final night. Cause again, I love it. It's just like, oh yeah, we're down, we're driving through the desert and it's snowing. There's your final night, Ra. You're right. And if you look, if you look closely at the lettering of, of the dialogue box where they're talking about the weather and then the, the caption box for C issues of final night. Those are those both look like they were added in like right before uh, this went to print. <laughs> like, maybe we just like changed the, and the snow, and it's just like yeah. oh, Archie Goodwin was like, Oh, wait, we gotta put a reference to Final Night in there. <laughs> Get the letterer back. <laughs> I love it. Uh it's fantastic. So yeah, I mean, as a setup, it's 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 a decent story. And again, yeah, I like it. Would you think as highly of it if it wasn't kits and art? <laughs> no, I well, depending on who did the artwork, yeah. yeah. I mean, his artwork saves a lot. It's, it's even saved the monkey gland stuff for me. Like, uh -huh. yeah, I just, yeah, his artwork is so good. His sister Lily yeah. saved it for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Channeling that Jim Ballant <laughs> Catwoman stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret, kids. Yeah. Lily. Lily See, oh, that's the other thing. She 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 spent her whole life in that ice cathedral. How does mm. she know how to swim? She doesn't know how to swim, but she still floats very well. That's right. <laughs> Natural flotation device. Exactly. 
<laughs> That's it. But honestly, when would she learn to swim? I mean, she seemed all impressed with taking a bath. I'm like, how, how, how did she know how to swim? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they had an under underground river under that big giant thing. Well, yeah, they didn't have those whole hot springs, but it seemed like they couldn't go in it or you'd get burned or whatever. No, oh, right, yeah. I don't know, unless she was just teaching herself somehow, I don't know. Yeah. Or one of her new gentleman callers uh, taught her. Yeah. <laughs> Lily. Yeah, maybe she maybe she took lessons while she was in Gotham. Lily, would you like to go on a date tomorrow night? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, tonight's my date with the guy from the YMCA. Yes, <laughs> I've got swim practice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, Lily and a bunch of six year olds. Hey, 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 it's about to swim. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else, Justin? No, I think yeah, I think we covered Angel in hiding pretty well. Yes. I'll be glad to see uh, Ezreal properly return with the next issue and the next story. Oh, definitely, yes. It was good. It was good to have a little break from from the status quo for a few issues, but yes. I'll be happy to get back to it. So, because yes, and then when we return to Azrael in a month, yes, we'll cover uh, Azrael twenty four through twenty six. Uh, I forget what, what's the name of that arc. Uh, was it Angel and? Angel in Flames or something like that. Hold on. Oh, yeah. That, I love that. It covered a 24. It's one of my favorites of the whole series. Angel at War. Oh, yeah. Angel, Angel at War. war. That's what it was. Saint Thomas. Yes. Yeah. This is it. Final battle. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Love covered that one. 24 is one of my favorites of the whole series. Yes. Yeah, just him standing in flames. Yeah. Yeah. If they ever do a collection of Asriel of the series, they, they should put that on the cover. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because that, that's better. That's even better than issue one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, in one month, yeah, we'll be covering, yes, Angel at War 24 through 26. And, kids, extra special treat. You're going to be getting a double header of Justin because uh, the next that's right. ep- the next episode of Azra will be episode 199. So, yep. And then Justin will return to join me and Lil for episode 200 when we cover Batman 89. That's right. I'm so excited for that. I think we got to do a live watch of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you said there is a way we can do it. Yeah, there's an app. We just can't show it to the... to. uh, Yeah, we won't be able to stream it to the audience, but we can watch it together. Yeah, Yeah. the three of us can watch it together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. That's right. (laughs) I remember seeing that in the theater when it came out. Me too. Yeah, it was one one of the singularly most defining moments of my youth i loved it i was enraptured by that i went to friday to open like my mother got home from work i was like take me to see batman take now. me to see it yeah this is pack. an event i mean yeah oh yeah yeah the, the theater was full yeah it was i've never seen a turnout like that before yeah. or since yeah i think that was the first movie i ever went to that was like if it wasn't sold out it was almost pretty much sold yeah out. it was wild yeah Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> Perhaps you might join me in a weep. <laughs> I love purple. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Yes. Yeah, so, send us, yes, send us your thoughts on uh, Angel at War, Azrael 24 through 26. And of course, like we said, uh, episode 200 is going to be, uh, yes, uh, Batman 89. Yes. I believe send we're going to your thoughts on time. all of the above. So email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Get your brand new Capes and Lunatics merch. Look. Yes. Have, get the brand shirt. new stuff and the classic swag. You can have the shirt with that uh, picture on the screen right there. Yes. That's right. Uh, yes. A and a plethora of designs to choose from. The new, the classic, it's all there. And of course, yes, as always, your uh, Queen Love Hellfire demands that you uh, tie tie the the portion of your uh, salary to it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Make sure you do that. Make it rain. That's right. 
Mm -hmm. So please, yes, uh, do that. Uh, so we don't have to uh, metaphorically be dancing on that pole when uh, the, the St. Dumas mob or comes in or starts <laughs> snowing in uh, July. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she was just working a f***ing stripper pole down at Divas. Wow, look at this episode. <laughs> That's the second time we use that drop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, and, of course, the Patreon. Uh, please subscribe. Yeah, so to join Patreon. me in the Patreon Elite. Yes. Can you get something uh, uncensored and exclusive just to the, for the patrons? You never know what it's going to be. But, again, it's uncensored little hellfire. So. That's right. And and hopefully Justin was talking about uh, requesting oh, suggesting an idea for, for the August, August yeah. episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, I think yeah, I think I'll have an idea for you guys this week. We'll see nice. what you think. Yeah. Nice. Yes. This episode brought to you by Justin Young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So please subscribe there. You can find the Patreon at patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Or you can find it all at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. More vicious and brutal than ever. That's right. I'll have you saying. Oh, that's naughty. And <laughs> I love. Yes. <laughs> that's right. All right. Now for this Mr. Justin the Owl, we can catch him. Well, our good friend. Yes. Now for our good friend. <laughs> it's me, your old pal the Owl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you can find him of course uh here at least once a month on we are the night <gasps> the, the batman podcast batman podcast and also on this feed you can catch him every so often on electric mullet uh the superman podcast that's right which will be doing uh well well you joined me for the uh episode before exile so at least four episodes in a row here for uh, on electric mullet uh, and at least one more after that because yes. we've got old Skyhook coming back. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to bring you back for like big events, maybe like uh, of course yeah. Death of Superman and uh, Panic in the Sky. Panic in the Sky. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Blaze Satanus War. Yeah. Well, yeah. God. Yeah. 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 All right. So yes, you can catch them there, and then over on Capes and Lunatics, you can hear them every week with me on Marvel Tales, where we discuss something different. Marvel, I think. We should still be on Atlantis attacks when this yes. drops. So, yes, we covered the, the epic Atlantis attacks coverage continues. Cover every issue. <laughs> uh, and of course, you can hear them at least once a month on X Men Classics, where, yes, we cover all the X books. And of course, once a month on the Energon Universe with me and Russell when he's not traumatized by monkey fluids. Yes, where we talk about <laughs> yeah. the GI Joe content. <laughs> And of course, that's not all the king where the king appears. So yes, uh, Justin, tell them about these fine shows. Yes, these fine shows. You can also find me on every month, Gamma Charge, where Russell and I soon to be joined by a new co-host, Josh, will be joining us for some episodes as well. So I'm excited about that. And we ha also have a Patreon, so do check that out if you're so inclined. Uh, Predator and Prey, the Yocha podcast, were joined by that high priest of Khonshu himself, Ray. And we are very excited about Predator versus Black Panther coming up at the end of the month. And last but not least, my solo show, The Lost Library of Legends, is dedicated to the forgotten and obscure comic book gems of the past. And I will be doing my very first summer spectacular on the show this month, Ooh. where I'll be doing three parts in a three episodes in a row on the Power Company from DC 2002. Tap 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 in my way downtown. <laughs> Giant sized man thing. <laughs> Scream at. <laughs> uh. Bird just went off just in time. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this up with a fork and spoon. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us again. Uh, oh, next step next week, Will and I will start Smith Temper. Oh, we're covering some of the Kevin Smith Batman stuff. Nice. Uh -huh. Now for something a little bit different. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll do. I think we're doing this three narrow run, too. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we're going to sure get some Kevin Smith stuff. Very cool. Over on Spider Tap, so, yes. Yeah. 
and like I said, in one month, Justin will be back. We'll cover yes. Indoor War, and then the week after that, episode 200 with me, Justin, and Will. And so. Yes, the big extravaganza. Yes. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, story straight down. There was no blood in the body. Oh, shit. It was all over the it was pavement. all over the pavement. I, I watch it every day one summer. I can pretty much quote that whole movie. Eckhart, think about the future. All right, kids, come back next time. Join us, same bad time. Same bad channel. We are the night. The Batman podcast. Remember, kids, don't hide from those senile old people. Good night. <laughs>